Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. How do you physically program this module? You could solder it to a special PCB and connect it with DuPont wires to a USB to serial adapter. Or, as I do, buy a module which has the USB to serial adapter already built in. This is very comfortable because it also handles the necessary timing to put the ESP into programming mode and back. So you can program your module exactly as you do it with your Arduinos. But of course, I want to build things for the Internet of Things. And I want to profit from the small size and the cheap price of the native ESP modules. This is why I built the target platform on a small PCB. All parts are on this PCB and the module goes handy into a very small package. This looks really nice. Really? How do you program the module now? If you programmed an ESP7 or 12 module, you know that you need at least four connections in addition to VCC and ground for programming. In this video, I show you how I solved this problem. I am European and I prefer the metric over the imperial system because it is simple. But in PCB design, the imperial system is still the standard. With one exception, the ESP modules. They use metric pin distances. So they are not compatible with a standard breadboard. And it is also not easy to solder pins to them because they use special pads. Unfortunately, this is only the first problem. If we look at my nice PCB, we see that the module is soldered on it and cannot be removed easily. I could have put a 6-pin connector to the PCB, but this is not convenient because it takes a lot of space, especially in height. So I choose a different approach. Pogo pins are used in PCB testing to connect test equipment to finished modules. These pogo pins consist of two parts and a spring. They create a certain pressure to make a reliable contact. I use now such pogo pins to make a connection to my ESP modules. And because I want to program them also when they are soldered to a PCB, I had to come from the front side. This means that I had to mirror all pins. I designed a small PCB with the required metric distances and soldered the pogos to it. The diameter of my pogo pins are 1.4 mm, which is very big compared with the pad distance of the ESPs of 2 mm. I found that thinner pogos exist and I ordered some, but for the moment I have to live with what I have. To stabilize the pogos, I mounted them in a 3D printed box. I heated them and pressed the board into the box. The back of the pogos melted the plastic a little and fixed them automatically. This is why I cannot remove the PCB anymore and show you the content. Because the ESP modules are completely packed in a metal case, my pogo pins would be shortened without protection. So I have to use some duct tape as isolation. Now I can press the module against the pogos. Problem solved? Unfortunately, I discovered that none of my USB to serial adapters have a RTS pin. According the programming instructions, the RTS pin has to be connected to the reset pin of the ESP modules. Back to the drawing board again. First, I had to understand the timing of the programming of the ESP modules. To program the modules, the GPIO15 and the GPIO0 have to be tied to ground 
and ch underscore pd has to be tied to vcc. To put the module into programming mode, you can either power the module on with the pins connected this way, or if you do not want to power cycle the module, you can reset it and make sure that the pins are in the described state before the reset goes back to VCC. I discovered that the Arduino IDE pulls the DTR line to low before it starts with programming. So I took one of my beloved ATiny85, which is a complete overkill, and wrote a small sketch to create the necessary timing. It waits till the IDE pulls the DTR to low and starts then with a reset cycle of the ESP module. Then it sets the other pins as requested and pulls the reset back to high. Now the ESP is in programming mode and can receive code from the IDE. By the way, I use the very fast speed of 900,021 and 600 bits per second, which is nearly 10 times faster than the old 115,000. I am not sure if this works with a stable release of the Arduino ISP software. I use the staging version. Now I can connect the ESP to my Pogo adapter and program the Blink example. And as you see, it works. A last remark. For this PCB I did not need the pins used for programming, like RX, TX, GPIO0 and GPIO15. This is why they are not connected on my PCB. If you need them for your design, you have to make sure that they can be influenced by the adapter. Otherwise, this method will not work. In the next video, I will show you how you can connect your ESP module to your smartphone and set parameters like access point name or password. And in the video after that, I will program the ESP module with a completely revolutionary method. Stay tuned. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.